Hey, what's going on guys? This is Somnath and this episode uh, 5 will be building up an end-to-end -end application using cloud application programming model where the database will be using the HANA cloud version and the front-end part will be fully elements based. Certain prerequisites, for example, you should have the B2B trial account access. It's a free, so definitely you can avail that. Also, you need an up and running HANA cloud instance. We'll talk about how to create that instance and everything. And the ID is a developer's choice. For example, in my case, I'll be using VS Studio, uh, VS Code rather. Uh, but you can use other IDs like Business Application Studio or maybe uh, Beam Editor or anything else as such, which you are uh, comfortable. The dependency is kind of a node because we'll be using the node flavor of this uh, TAPM. So the node is required to be pre-installed. Uh, that's pretty much, I believe, the prerequisite. And then we can you know, achieve this kind of a simple application uh, where the database will be HANA Cloud. The service part, which is the backend service, will be all built up with the CDS, which is the core data service. And uh, the, we'll not use any sort of a business logic as such, but if, if at all we need to, that will be all pretty much the Node.js flavor. And the front-end part, as I said, is the Fury element based. So here you can anticipate itself. It's, a, it's basically a multi-target uh, application, but the different technologies are all you know linked up. Uh, and obviously the BTP part will hold the HANA Cloud instance. So the development will be done in our local VS code, but the testing while we'll do will basically follow a hybrid model so that we can test the application all the way from the cloud without deploying the application to the cloud, right? So that uh, the interesting thing that we'll, we'll, we'll see like how it works. So what's uh, we are waiting for? Let's get onto our VS code and start uh, making our hands start with the CAPM application builder. So this is a scratch kind of an folder, nothing there. And we'll be using this template called CAP project to build our application. So we have to just go to view then common palette and just click on this open template wizard and it will take you to this particular uh, template wizard section and you need to select cap project out of this. No, not necessarily you will have this cap project installed already. So if it is not available, you just click on this particular call explore and install generators and then you'll have to search at the TCP forward slash and you can find the different available generator that's already, in, already there because a couple of things I have already installed and for example, this one called CAP project, I already installed. So you need to install this one in case you don't have it. Now, a quick uh, troubleshooting guide. When you install this one, uh, it you may encounter this kind of problem. For example, I encountered like certificate has expired and that because my NPM registry was incorrect. Uh, if I if you run NPM config ls minus l, then I, you will see this kind of things available in your machine probably. Not necessarily you should have, but in case you have it, you need to delete them. So to delete this uh, incorrect registry, you need to run this command in your command line called npm config delete address SAP registry and npm config delete address SAP hyphen registry. When whichever incorrect entries will find like this, you need to delete them first. And once you delete it, then you can uh, you know try reinstalling that uh, you know generator, and it will be available to you. So Let's start with this CAP project. So I can create something called CAP Bookshop. Okay, so this is the our uh, project name. Uh, you have two flavors. SAP so far have provided, which is the Java and Node.js. So we'll be using Node.js uh, as a flavor. A CACD pipeline you can take. Configuration SAP HANA deployment is yes, we need it. And we'll be using a multi-target based application. So select that one also, then click on finish. So it will basically uh, generate uh, the artifacts over here and uh, it will now reopen that application uh, like this. So you see an enter things is automatically generated by the, by the template. So as I said, you have three folders, the application database and service. In the package.json, you will see some dependencies like CDS, okay, so CDS will not to change this version to six and the DB kind is a HANA cloud. That's currently it's the default setup. Service folder is empty and application is also empty. 
So that's pretty much the generation. And if you go to mta.aml, that is the multi toolkit application deployment descriptor. So currently it is having this service and the main model, which is an the application which we are going to build up. So whatever we have it, let's add our HANA database a part of. So let's see what's happening. So we'll be using a feature of the CDS called CDS. So CDS a version, uh, if we just run, uh, currently it will tell me the different CDS uh, compilers, SDK, etc. So you need to just install SAP SDS DK. So that's the thing you need to install in your machine. And that is you can run in PM install minus G and the rate SAP. Then uh, CDS DK. So minus G means global. So this CDS DK will be installed globally to your machine. And then CDS you can access it like this as I did, like CDS version. Then it will tell you the different uh, component that is installed already. Fine. So now let's do one thing. We are already in this particular uh, folder. So let's add CDS at HANA. So this is called the feature of a CDS and it will add HANA as a database. So adding this feature and cancel. I'll update it later, not now. So now this is the CDS is added. What will happen? This is now updating my MTA, which is a DB uh, deployer, demo DB deployer, and also this HDA shared that is also added as an HDA container to my MTA. Now, by default, is the generation, so I'll be fetching it from DB only. So, if you do this, we need to change a little bit of our builder as well. We can just scroll down a little and within this series we can add this particular section so we are just saying the destination when it will build it it will pick from the db because we have changed in the package save all right okay so it saved it so now what next to be done we need to we have a lot of you know dependencies created already added to my package or json right so we need to install those dependencies first and here the dev dependencies they are using an SQLite 3 I'll, I'll not be using this uh, this one so I don't need to install this part okay saving it and let's uh, install this one because we'll be using the HANA database CDS um, we can call npm install okay so this all dependent things will be installed and we will create a, um, it will be stored on the node model folders. I'm pausing this video till it's uh, installed all dependencies. Looks like the installation is complete and you can see the node models been created. Okay, fine. So next thing is like we need a little Node.js module which will be helping to uh, you know create a DB model for us that will be used to deploy the content. So CDS, I think it's called HANA CLI. So this is one more, one more, you know, NPM package that you need to install to have this HANA CLI. So HANA CLI, and then you can write the create model. M is capital. So what will happen? It will create a little Node.js model in the package. Node.js and everything will be created. And you just so this build .js created package .js and it's added. So if I just see this SAP is telling this just a workaround. Currently they are just running a different child process and it's just checking the external package dot JSON is available. If it is available, then it runs this one by installing all the dependencies and it will also the build the enter project. So that's the model that's is creating. So our now the database is completely empty. So started creating a new file. They call it schema.cds. Any name you can give but it should be a extension series. To save time, I want to just paste the codes that already I got from SAP sample uh, Git repository. I'll give the URL link in the description box. You can check there. And certain little modifications I have done on top of, because I wanted to make this uh, 
demo a little more simplified than we have in our repository or SAP provided repository. But I'll explain what exactly we are doing over here. So let's start first from this line, line seven. So this is called the namespace. Anything you can give. Uh, we have given sap.capr.bookshop. Now we have two entities. One is a books entities. The naming convention should be capital and because of some tables, multiple books. So it should be plural books entities. Similar ways we have an author entities. Okay. Now certain fields over given. Uh, obviously you need to give a key field. So the type is available over here. Now to make your development little easier, you can install certain uh, extensions. A lot of extensions already installed in my case, I guess. Uh, language support. Okay. So that's uh, a good uh, help helping utility that will be uh, that will help you to develop this kind of a studious thing. So you can install this extension. And this is what the key fields as you can see. Now, whichever the description, um, let's say title and uh, this field, the description uh, is kind of a string that is a possibility of having a translation. Uh, you need to use the localized that add on. Okay. And the side by side, I have added certain annotations and all those IATN we haven't yet created. So we can create, we'll create it shortly. So this item folder, so from which these particular values are all being referred to. So we have this you know, couple of fields that we have added. Now here one important thing, or the uh, two important things are there. The first thing is the manage part. So the manage is called an aspect. It's not a type. Okay. Where from we'll get this manage from this SAP provided CDS common particular file. So this is the file actually all installed. Uh, just now we did an NPM installation, right? To add all the dependencies. And with this SAP series, we have this common folder, common series file. So this is the file that's been installed now. And the manage aspect will be referred from this file only. So you can just click on this managed. It will take you this manage particular aspect. It's not a type, as I said, it's an aspect. In uh, software, there's a concept called aspect oriented programming. So I was just discussing a little bit in this particular video, as you can see uh, in the UFM debugging. So, uh, so the same concept is being followed as an aspect to the programming. So these are the fields. This fields will be automatically added to my database, though I am not explicitly adding to my entity. Second thing is similar way the currency is type. It's not an aspect. It's a type and it's a, it's again referred from this particular SAP common file. Okay. So you are using this currencies managed and a lot more other things are also there for example countries and all but I'll, I have just used this currency and managed and and the SAP we'll see SAP how to use that the second point is kind of uh, the association so you say like this authors the book authors has an association uh, to another entity and that name entity called authors okay so this is the entity it also has the managed as an aspect side by side the different fields you have and the books it's linked to because it's an association from books to author so from uh, an author can write multiple books so we have this association linked to over here now this kind of a joining condition will be applied where this many concept is available okay otherwise you don't need to add this uh, condition right so it's just a kind of a joint condition like how this author is linked to the books entity i think that's pretty much uh, easy to understand, not much complicated. The third entity uh, is called the joiners. So it's basically a kind of a value list or a kind of a drop down list, which SAP is prefers in the form of code list. And it's kind of a hierarchy when same uh, joiners has a parent and children, and it just followed the same concept, but in this case, a composition. So this is very important because composition is only applicable as a parent and child because a child cannot exist without a parent. So that's the reason composition is being used, not the association in this case. So that's pretty much the model, uh, the entity model that we have created. Now we have to expose this one as a service. So we have to write some things over here. So let's create a file service as a catalog service 
start series. So what we'll be doing? Uh, what we are doing? We are basically bringing the schema uh, as a kind of a, a relative path of my schema under the DB folder, and we are just you know taking the enter SAP Capital Bookshop as the namespace, and that we are just referring to my. I mean anything you can take it. So this is the service that we are creating, and that basically exposing two entities. One is the books, and the other is the authors as a service that we are exposing out of our entity sets. Now let's save all the files, all the changes. So we have our uh, DB schema and we have, have our service available. So let's build this now, series build. And we have the modules and now the build is performed and this generated folder is created. And you can find this DB and service a part of this folder, right? But our models is created. So now to test this one, we can just simply run CDS watch. Now once we run this watch, it basically takes all the modules from the node models. This common suite is being referred, and the catalog service that we have just created, and the DB uh, schema or CDS. These three things we are basically referred to so far, and then it actually creating a path which built out out of this catalog service it takes the first one and it make it all small uh, you know uh, lowercase letters and that's by default it's uh, creating the service name as a catalog and it's listening in this port 4004 so that's the default port for the cap application so if i click on this it's opening in my another uh, another monitor so this you see this kind of things are available so if you now click on books no database credentials provided okay anything you click on this it says 500 errors and no database credentials provided the reason being this all artifacts we are linking to the hana database which is in cloud so it is trying to connect to cloud and it doesn't have any credentials available yet to connect with the HANA system available in our BTP trial account. So the next thing should be, we need to add our, this artifacts or the tables, what we are creating different entities should be a part of the, our HANA system or HANA instance. So let's create the HANA system instance now. Now to create the HANA database instance, you need to come to a trial account and come to your dev space so click on this page it will take you to this your uh, dev section currently it's having no implication that's fine left side you have sap hana cloud click on that and it will open this kind of a page currently i have already created this particular instance so that's the reason it is showing this card but for you of course it will be empty uh, you just need to click on this create and you have to go for this hana database uh, SAP HANA database, click on that. It may ask for some authentication, a single sign on authentication. So just select that and then it will come to this page. So now out of this, you will be selecting this one on a database. Click on next step. We don't need any data lake for this tutorial. And now it will automatically define your, uh, I mean, check your organization and the space. Currently, I have already a, a instance names DB admin. So this is the default name that uh, SAP will propose. You can give any other name. Let's say one, two, three. So this is kind of an instance name is added. Uh, now some password and click on next step. So this is kind of a default setup uh, to virtual uh, cloud units. It will be provided and certain storage is 120 GB and the runtime memory is 30 GB so go for the next step ignore this go to the next step important is you have to select select this allow all IP addresses by default you select an allow BTP but you just need to select allow all IP addresses this is not uh, a production uh, uh, setup of course you definitely not entertain any sort of uh, requests from any different computers so, but for this uh, exercise, it's always good to go for an allow IP addresses. And finally, you just need to click on create. Okay, then the HANA database instance will be created. It will take a significant amount of time, 
but uh, once it's created make sure it is up and running we open side by side the cloud central also i think cloud central is fine and you, you can see this is stopped now to open this i mean start it you just click on this and click on the start button and it will be started so just for my regular day to day activities it's very annoying for me to come to this uh, screen and make it start and stop so i just created a uh, different uh, utility uh, for git bash and here i can just run cfs so it will just run my utility which is a cloud foundry script i need to enter the password it will authenticate And it will try to log into my BTP. It's successful login is done. So now next is I need to just ensure that my uh, Ana is up and running. So I need to select the option five, click enter, and it will basically start the Hana from my command from my utility or the kind of a bash script that I have created. So currently the status is stopped, and soon it will start this uh, this uh, particular process, and it will say update in progress. Okay, if it is running everything fine. Yeah, it is saying update in progress. See if I side by side open our this one and just click on the refresh or reload. I'll be also seeing this it is kind of kind of a you know, starting position. Yeah, now it is starting because it's all working from my bash script. So after some time, if I now click on six, it will just still check the status of my HANA DB and it will be just telling me the status is running or maybe it's in progress so it is not yet running so you need to wait for a couple of more seconds and you need to wait till your status is showing running over here i'm just pausing the video because it will take certain time so let's run one more time the six status and it will now hopefully it is in running condition now yeah it is up and running okay so now next is we need to create an hana instance right we i mean HANA, hana database we have created but we need a container where we can deploy this content into that that is called an hdi right hana deployment infrastructure so for that we need to use cf cloud foundry so and then we have to use create create service now what is the application application is hana what is the planning hdi shared this is the plan that you are using on the on the trial instance and the application is called cap hana uh story elements okay okay so this is what we are going to create our uh instance so now it will take little time again to create that instance it's saying create in progress so here also you can just run now uh, our first command called one which will list on all the instances and this is one it now showing we have just created cap on a div and this is created uh, create in progress here also you can see the HANA instance that you already I created along back that is the HANA cloud trial so this is already we are we had it before maybe in one of the episode I can also explain how this particular cloud uh, I mean CLI tool been created using a bash script uh, you can create your own tool uh, accordingly and you can you know play around with this instead of logging each time to BTP looks like now it is you know a create succeed so this particular things that is done so our uh, HDI is created and so we should be able to deploy our artifacts in this PDS deploy to HANA. And what is the uh, instance name? That is cap HANA uh, Fury Elements Dev, right? So what will happen? It will just create the build again, and it will check the container that we have just created. It will create a new key, service key for this one with a hyphen key and finally it will install the hd deployer 
just wait for some time because it will take a little time to pro to complete the process cool it's done and it's saying like it's created a new file called serious private.json and with a profile mode as hybrid so what happens this is the file being created and it actually using this kind of a connection string to connect the backend in a hybrid scenario and from the local system now I will be able to connect uh, to HANA database in DTP and I'll be able to get the details for example I can run HANA CRI and tables what will happen it will use this particular connection string now and it will tell me the what are the different tables that is available uh, we had two in instances so let's see how it works yeah so it's showing the tables which been created just now our deployment process and it's checking this one from the CDS private JSON and it is following this particular instance name specifically that this uh, JSON file contents cool now next will be let us fill up certain data to this particular tables and so that we can you know we can now check the JSON values so currently the tables are empty so if we just go to the other bash let's close this one because it will still run this one it will not work if we click on book it will still say the connection string missing so what we need to do control c and now we have to write series watch dash this profile hybrid so the moment we run this command as we have just seen in the other terminal this one it will work as a hybrid mode if i just run this command it will now again uh, pick the information because it is now resolving the cloud service bindings and it will get the details of the of my credentials uh, to connect to the database in sans you see so these things all generated all the passwords are you know encrypted and now it is still running in the 404 so if i just click on that it is opening as a fresh same, same page but if i click on book it doesn't give a 500 error anymore but of course it is showing uh, an empty value because there is no table data so let's fill certain records in the csv format so what i did i have just you know added a folder called data and under that i have just added a couple of csv files and the file has a naming convention the first part is the namespace which is sap.capper.bookshop then there is a dash and the particular entity that we need to fill through so it's an authors.csv so this is the convention that's been followed and each file contains the specific records and these files i have received i, I basically got from this sap provided sample uh, repository you can also you know get those files from there itself fine so that is all three files so now what we can do we can redeploy uh, things so that the data will be uh, pushed into the database so so let's let's do one thing instead of writing this command each time let's create a shortcut we call it hana deploy or edge deploy and we can write something called series deploy to hana right and then cap hana fury element tape so this is what we want to deploy the things to each time we want right so save this one let's go there and just run npm maybe we can hit npm run page deploy okay so this command will basically trigger this particular command gets triggered okay and it will again upload the files but interestingly you see this time it is loading my data folder also the different csv files that we have added so that's been added to this so those data will be now pulled or rather pushed into the hana database so it looks like it's all properly uh, added if i go to the hana database once again so 
or maybe we can just go back and check the books we'll see this data now being fished all the way from the hana database right but it's actually running from a local host and it's only possible because we have this uh, the hybrid uh, mode option okay so now this authors if you run so this is basically uh, particular this author or uh, the book is being expanded so it has one of the books been written by this author fine so this part of this back end service is working fine uh, from the local and my database is also filled with so next thing is we need to add the front end part or the application part so for that we need to add another feature called cds app router if we create this one we are adding a feature called xsua authentication and adding a feature called app router so what happens is now in the app folder certain things created for example access app.json it's automatically generated package.json filled with the app router default environment.json is also added up side by side in the access security is the role been added which is an empty at this moment also if you go to mta.yml you will find this particular things added like access security access ua those kind of things already added to our application all great right so this app router module and etc all created now to start with i will make this little easy uh, by setting up this authentication method as none because we don't need to uh, we, we don't we are not planning to have this authentication at the first go we'll create our service and application and we'll see without any authentication and the next will add authentication and different roles and will perform to see how it works i have created certain videos on the app router and xsc authentication using passport so if you are interested uh, you can take a look on these videos as being shown over here in the screen fine so let's remove only this having none is not enough you have to remove this authentication type also well, for both the routes so this is two routes so and it's having a local directory from here it will be just triggering so that's what it says so file save all so next would be this uh, package.json contains the app router which is the node module and its purpose is just to it, the auth auth flow will be you know started or initiated by this app router so that the user will get a, a screen to for login and uh, entering the credentials and finally if the credential is successful it will uh, reroute the call to the application so that uh, the data can be fetched so that is the overall reason this app router uh, job so let's get into this folder called cd app because we, within this app folder we have this package.json so now run npm install so what will happen it will basically have a node modules created within this app folder installing the app router yeah, it's all installed and we have um, we have done a lot of things already so let's store these changes in a git repository so that with a specific branch name so that we can follow along uh, in the next episode from there uh, onwards let's give the repository name as cap uh, bookshop demo i'm setting it up as a public repository and that's all just create repository so this is one been created so let's copy this one and we can rename the branch also if you want so let's uh, first enable this repository as a git enable so cd so i'll take back this one to the initial root branch a root uh, folder now git init will initialize this one and let's Check the uh, git ignore file. I just want to ensure that node modules are a part of ignore ignore things. We have one more things like app node modules also. 
so let's put that as well that we don't consider this node models at all anywhere save this one and now if i just check git status uh, so these are the files being considered git ignore app db mt and etc pretty fine so let's change the name of the branch uh we can choose something like it branch minus m and then branch name like zero one app ana fury elements okay that is the branch name i'm changing this master to this branch and now the branch name gets changed so like we can put git remote at origin and you can paste this url which we just created this particular thing so origin been added now git uh let's stage the changes because all are uh, modified so let's fit uh, add the add dot so that it will stage all the files now let's commit locally first minus m put uh, zero one uh, initial deployment so now it is committing all the changes to my local git and finally git push minus u we can put origin and zero one so that is the branch remotely that we are going to create now in the remote we have a master branch as a default so we are creating a new branch there as well and we have already pushed changes so let's go to this branch uh, go to this repository click on that and you have this branch now zero one and that's been all pushed into right great so next thing is we need to create our front-end application and for that uh, we need to again go back to the template and we need to choose this time uh, of course the specific fury application and we are going to select the fury elements so let's report we want to create next now the data source couple of options is to be given we have to select the fourth one because we are using the cap project so use the local cap model and the folder is of course the current folder which is we are working on select this folder and then it will uh, ask you to add the old data service so of course we have created catalog service which is the node just lever then the start button is enabled or active now the main entity i want to go with the author not books because author does have a multiple books relationship so that i can attach the books over here click on next the project name you can put cap theory element bookshop so that it will be easy to remember so uh, book top application so let's take the latest version and i don't want to deploy anything configuration to mta i don't need fury launchpad also yes i want to do an advanced configuration and i want to set it as a dark mode uh, or you can add javascript code also because later on we can may need to add certain node.js things so let's add it up now skip generation of associated annotations no we'll not keep the uh, associate uh, skip the annotation because we're going in the fury elements and it runs on the annotations we cannot skip it in a in particular choice so we should say no not to skip so now click on finish so what will happen it will create something over here in this app folder shortly yeah, it's created this AP bookshop and still processing going on and now it basically installing certain dependencies and this is the application that's all created by the generator uh, fury generator fury template we have used so I, I have just explained the cap template generator how to avail it if you don't uh, in case you don't have this auto uh, install you need to you don't you know right now the how to get that template I believe you can manage it by your own so let's wait for some time till the installations are over and then we'll be able to test our application 
now it's all installed and my app query element bookshop application is ready for testing so it does have annotations.series but it contains the catalog service only and it has also created something called service.series and that actually applies the same file from this application so currently actually we don't have any annotations as such available so let's see how this application behaves so we have this uh, the second terminal which is already running uh, with the serious watch so click on this again it opens now and now you can see this query element bookshop web app index html this particular thing is available now so you can click on this index and our application should be available but you can see there is no fields nothing is available no columns is available so if i click on go uh, it is probably you would say that fields i mean columns is yet to be selected right so there, there is no column because no, no annotation has been placed but now i have have an option to select it manually so you can select certain things and as i told that managed uh, option will add those kind of additional audit fields so i'm not selecting this one for display but i can see this data is now available so that application is working data is being fetched but this columns is not being visible also if i select on that ideally it should navigate to but we don't have any navigation annotations linked to that's the reason the navigation is not working so the next uh, action item would be to add the annotation but the question is where to add this annotation so this is a capair you know application i mean capair portal uh, that is the main repository for the cap development if i go to the adding sap fury annotations there is a question called where to put it and the answer is you have to put the recommendation to put this was a separate cds file under this app folder only and they have given certain example so we, we should also follow this recommendation and we'll add things in our uh, app folder itself so this is our annotations start series that we already created in this bookshop and it is able to access my catalog service so now catalog service is available over here so you can add our annotation inside this file to save the time i would like to paste the code over here let's so minimize this one so two annotations i have added so this ui part i mean this books for this catalog service books i have added with this annotate uh, syntax and added the different line items for the books side by side for the authors we have added the header info the certain selection criteria as well the author table line item table here one more thing we have added this particular annotations called books ui line item so this will help us to get into the book uh, entity details and certain you know the field group objects that will be seen over here one thing is missing we don't have this in file over here so let's create it and that the approach should be should be outside our uh, uh it will be available at the root folder so i can create a new folder called underscore i 18 n and inside that i'll have a new file called i 18 n uh, dot properties let's let me copy my item file from my other application because no need to spend time just for copy paste so it is faster so now my annotations is available and all my warnings is now removed these two things are not added as an item in that's okay but this is all pretty much uh, syntactically correct so make sure you save all the changes and now again it is serious watch is running on the same port so open this port now click on this index.html and uh, this time we are expecting a selection field as well as all the columns are now up and uh, uh, displaying well so click and go now we'll be able to fetch all my authors and there is a checkbox and i can make and delete operations hopefully and if i select now this is an active one so if i select on this it will navigate to me to back 
the different uh, page where I can see the uh, books details. If I go back and select other uh, authors, here I have two books available for the same author. Yeah, so that pretty much the application is working. Uh, I think it's pretty good, right? All the things are working fine. And if we want to um, author, I mean, if we want to add some some filters only for one zero one, is a default fury elements feature. I don't need to write any code, but it will work the filtration as a out of the box. That's great. So the thing is missing this uh, application is it doesn't have any authentication or you know kind of authorization uh, feature. So anybody can access this application. So in the next episode, plan is to add the authentication. We'll be using app router and different uh, access UA capabilities. So that a specific set of users can access this, not everyone. So in the next episode, intention would be to add the those kind of you know capabilities, and we'll explore more on the app router and, and authentication details. And also, uh, one more thing is pending. We have added this Fury components, uh, but uh, we should you know deploy back to our uh, repository so we can just check git uh, status and this is like this package .json and corresponding query component added so we can add git add and git comic minus m we can add zero one and but it's ui uh, added and now git push minus u origin and zero one uh, that particular branch that's all so our changes now push back to the git repository and in the subsequent episodes as i said we'll deep dive onto more authentication stay tuned and thanks for watching a short will again uh, connect